Before we begin testing our app on a real device, we must have an iTunes Connect test user. And here's how you set one up. The advantage of a test user, by the way, is that you can literally test your transactions without money changing hands. That's very important because you don't want to test your in-app purchase 20 times and basically pay yourself 20 times a dollar. It will just be annoying and it, it doesn't have to be that way. Apple have the system called a sandbox and here's how that works. Once you log into itunesconnect.apple.com, on the bottom left you can see a section that's called Manage Users. And if you click that, you get two sections. One for the proper iTunes Connect users. Those are members of your team who you give access to your developer account. Uh, for example, financing people or anyone who needs to have a look at the stats. Or if you're working for a company and there's several developers accessing this to, so that they can all set up apps or uh, submit new versions and all that. That's, that's all here in the left section. On the right section, you see test users. And if you, this is what we want to click on. I have a few test users set up already. These are all invalid email addresses. They don't have to be real addresses. Nothing will ever get sent there in regards to communication. And feel free to delete them as well. On the top left here, add a new user. And I suppose we're going to call ours screencast. An email address, this can be anything you make up. It just has to be an email format. So it has to contain an at sign and it has to have some kind of domain. I'm going to call mine US Tester 4 at versluis.com. The email and the password is what you're going to use to log in to the test app store on your real device. So even though the email address doesn't have to be valid, the password conforms to Apple's proper password guidelines. So I think it has to start with a capital letter. Let's call it password with a capital P. And uh, then it needs to contain a number, I believe. Let's try this out. I'm going to call it 123 and repeat that. Date of birth can be made up as well. Select iTunes Store. Now this is interesting because you can select any of the real App Store regions here from that big list. I'm going to set up a couple. I'm going to set up, uh, the first one is going to be um, United States, hence US Tester 4. I'm going to set up another one in a minute for UK Tester 4, which will be the UK iTunes Store. Well, there we go, and if you try and submit that, uh, iTunes Connect will tell you what's wrong with this. Please enter a question between 6 and 35 characters long. So a secret question this and answer that isn't going to work. Well, there we go, see if that works. Okay, that was cool, but a more complex password is required. This can be done several ways, such as joining the words of a phrase together or combining the first letter of each word. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by a complex password. Perhaps we'll just append an exclamation mark to the end. That seems to have done the trick. Let's do the same thing again for our UK tester. Call them screencast. And this is going to be the United Kingdom. Notice that all the email addresses that are set up as test users on iTunes Connect are all unique email addresses. So if you were to say test at test.com, you can bet on it that some clever clock has already used that, and tester1 at yahoo.com, and all these things that are probably going to be gone already. So just use your own domain, and you can, of course, uh, delete that later. Okay, we have two new test users, US Tester 4 and UK Tester 4, both at versluis.com. One is for the US App Store, one is for the UK App Store. We'll see what the implication of that is in a moment. Hit done, and we're done here in iTunes Connect. Let's go back to Xcode and use these test users to test our in-app purchase on a real device. Here's my real-life iPhone. And I must remember that my mouse is just going to be an indicator here. I won't be able to click any of this. I need to really put my finger on the iPhone for that. In preparation for using these test users, this is a vitally important step, and I can't emphasize this enough. You must never use your own user to make test purchases. You can, but it's not going to work, and you're going to end up with weird error messages. Likewise, you must not 
ever use a test user to make a real purchase on the App Store. For example, an app that is already on the App Store. If you're going to use that test user with the real App Store rather than with the sandbox, that test user becomes invalid instantly and you'll have to delete it and start all over again. To avoid any mishaps here, let's go into settings on your iOS device and scroll down to iTunes and App Store. Click on it and notice that right now this is my real Apple ID. I don't want to be logged in with that while we're testing. So it's vitally important that we log ourselves out in settings. I'll show you the implication of that. If you go home and uh, open the App Store, the real App Store, and scroll to the very bottom. Look, you can see on the prices which region of the App Store you're currently in. So right now I'm displaying my prices in British pounds. That means I'm logged in the UK App Store. On the bottom here, you can verify that. This is my Apple ID here. And it shows you I've got a bit of credit here. Perfect. But if we go back to settings into iTunes and App Store, let's tap on this here, the Apple ID, and then select Sign Out. Now under settings, we're not logged into the App Store. And again, if we click home here and go back to the App Store, you can see that the implication is that no one is currently signed in. This is what we want. Don't sign in here with your test user account. We're gonna do all that from the app. Speaking of which, let's bring this up and install it on our test device. I would expect right now for my app to come up with free version and nothing else. Notice I haven't actually tested this before on this device, so you know this is not made up. If anything goes wrong, you'll be here to see this live. <laughs> there we go. Let's tap the purchase button up here. And after a short delay, what we want to appear is the store UI. It looks like nothing happens. That's good, isn't it? That's a really good start here. Okay, looks like I've got a problem in my code here. Let's examine this step by step. When I press the purchase button, this is a good exercise in debugging here as well. I would like for this to cause a break here. So I'm gonna set a break point on the gutter. Uh, let's tap purchase. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is executed. Self new shop validate product identifiers. Let's see if that happens. So I'm gonna take that break point away again. And in my shop class, under validate product identifiers, let's collapse these methods here. There it is. I would now expect for this method to be called. Okay, so I'll click that little play button to go to, to continue program execution and go to the next breakpoint. Okay, looks like this is good as well. This happens, the request starts, and I would expect now for the App Store to get back to my shop class and call the request did receive response. So let's open that here, set a breakpoint here, delete this one, and continue program execution. Well, it looks like that delegate is never called. Why is that, I wonder? Are we properly conforming, perhaps in the header file, to the SK product request delegate? We are. Are we connected to the internet? We are. Yet the app store doesn't seem to want to get back to us. Uh, there is something else I did not check uh, under in my shop implementation class where the product's request is being started. I'm never setting the delegate. Uh, great, I'm glad I spotted it. Uh, the easy way out here is to say request delegate is self. The shop class needs to be the delegate of the SK product's request. Otherwise, who is the app store going to get back to? Which class is going to listen? Nobody. And that's precisely what happened in our case here. Okay, great. Let's run this app again. I've still got my breakpoint active, so I'm expecting that the app is going to halt execution right here as soon as I click the purchase button. And look, that's precisely what happens. Let's get rid of that breakpoint. Whew, I'm so glad we sorted this out. Let's hit play. And there we go. This is our UI alert view. So in a program flow way, this is now being brought up via self-display store UI from our custom shop class. 
any button that's being pressed will be directed to the view controller who is then going to react. So in our case, let me first of all say maybe later, nothing happens, the alert view gets dismissed, and that's the end of that. That's cool. If I try this again, hit purchase, UI alert view comes up again, let me press the buy this for £1.49 button, tier 2, it displays it correctly in British pounds, that's perfect. In my view controller, I want to head over to the alert view method, just set a breakpoint there, just so that I can examine if this is happening correctly. Let me click this now here, buy this for 149. Perfect, we're going into the correct method. Button zero is being pressed. And we should call the make the purchase method on our shop. In fact, let's go back there and see if that is happening. Make the purchase, here it is. Put a breakpoint, see what happens. Continue program execution. Awesome stuff. Take the breakpoint away and keep going. And now I'm being prompted to sign in. And uh, obviously we need to do this with our test user account. So let's do that. Use existing. And since this is the UK one, I'm just gonna, since I'm already in the UK app store, it appears, I'm just gonna use my UK tester account. One, two, three, exclamation mark. App Store comes back. So this is the method that we've implemented in our app delegate now. The app delegate, let's just remind ourselves where that is, is implementing in the header file, in fact, the SK Payment Transaction Observer. So the SK Payment Transaction Observer takes care of this. We can say cancel or buy. In our case, we'll say buy. And just to show you what happens next, in our app delegate implementation file, the payment queue updated transactions will be called. Let's set a breakpoint so that we can examine that. Buy, and with a short delay, one would hope, there we go, the program gets back to our app delegate and halts here. In a transaction, we have one object, which is the one I've just purchased. That's perfect. And let's take the breakpoint away again and continue program execution. This should have now unlocked the full version, save the receipts, which we haven't really implemented yet. But there we go, we should now have a key of full version set to yes in our user defaults. The one thing that we didn't implement is the fact that this label doesn't quite update live right now. But that's cool, we just stop our app and launch it again and the, the label should update properly. Full version, there we go. Success, full on success story. Updating the label live, of course, you can use an observer, you can use a notification for that, you can create your own delegate to do that, there's multiple ways to do that. So that's, uh, that's the basic store UI done, we can make purchases in-app with our test user. We can test this again with our US tester, and something else is going to happen. I'm not going to set all these breakpoints now, I'm just going to see if it works. So let's uh, stop the app, and again under the settings menu, Go to iTunes and App Store and just check. Yeah, look at that now. We're logged in as UK tester. So we don't want that. We're going to log ourselves out again, which will also log us out of the App Store. There we go. We're out. But we're still technically in the UK App Store. So this is something else that's going to happen. That's going to happen to everyone who has once logged into Territory 1 and now signs in with an Apple ID that is based on Territory 2. Uh, this is now going to change to US dollars and the App Store is going to get back to us with that. So uh, let's do that again. Run the app. Oh, sorry, it says that's full version. Let's stop it and delete it from the device. There. The important thing is when we do that, the user defaults also get deleted and therefore the in-app purchase also gets deleted from the system. There we go. If we run it again, we're back to the free version. It's kind of what we want. Let's click the purchase button one more time. And indeed, I do want to buy this for £1.49. In fact, I want to really buy it for $1.99. But let's see what happens. Use an existing Apple ID. And in my case, that will be the US tester.
And there. This Apple ID is only valid for purchases in the US iTunes store, and you will be switched to that store, and therefore the currency is going to change. The great thing is we don't really have to get involved in that, and iTunes Connect is going to take care of all of that. Notice one thing that I haven't mentioned yet. This line here, real users with real Apple IDs, they won't see that. We see environment sandbox, and that's this system that doesn't take transactions, but it behaves just like the real App Store. So we just say OK to this and dismiss that. The Apple then switches to the App Store, which is a little bit annoying, I find, and it'll now load the US App Store, because technically behind the scenes, I suppose, we're now being logged in to the US App Store. This may take a moment, it may never come up, because guess what? Apple's devices aren't completely bug-free either. I'm already getting bored of it, so I'm just going to hit the Home button and go back to our app. We're still sitting here saying free version. Nothing else is going to happen. This is just an App Store thing, and users are now required to press that Purchase button again. And now we're seeing the correct currency here, well, for the US anyway, $1.99. It also means we're correctly logged in behind the scenes. It's one of those quirks. It happens when you change regions. But hopefully your real customers won't do that. If they have a UK device, they're in the UK, they've got their UK Apple ID, and for them this isn't going to happen unless they change territories in the App Store. But for you as a tester, this may well happen when you um, test Russian rubles and you know Danish krona next week. One of those things. So we'll click this one here. Buy this for $1.99 now. Confirm it. We're still on the app sandbox. That's cool. We click buy. And behind the scenes, our user defaults are set. And of course, our label isn't updated automatically. And no problem. We'll just go and stop this app and run it again. And we should see correctly that we're now on the full version. Fantastic! In our next video, we're going to have a look at how to restore purchases and amend that UI alert view to show us three options.